So yep, yeah. I'm about set up here. Everything's recording. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, it's good to see some uh, uh, people joining at the start. It's always great to see interest in certain topics. Um, so today, I think we're just going to cover the pour over baskets. Um, today, we're going to do a few brews with the V60. Um, we'll most likely do uh, the profile that was helped with Decent and Scott Rayo. Um, and um, we'll see if we can have some time later and tweak a, tweak a certain profile and, and see how you guys can also uh, adjust things to get the most out of your brews. Um, so um, if there's no immediate questions so far, um, I'll get on to making the first brew of the day. Um, so John, do you have anything specific you really want to go through this, this morning? Uh, no, I'm leaving it um, up to you. Okay, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, we don't have any questions so far, so you can just go ahead and then I'll pick it up uh, as you go. Okay. So, um, I've just picked up those uh, those Yunnan beans. I, I remember you trying those uh, at, at, at the office, John. Yeah, those were great. You don't have any of the Scott Rayo facsimile stuff with you, do you? Uh, I do, yeah, but... Um, I only had a little bit over, so uh, it, it's not quite enough to do a brew with. I only brought like 50 grams with me, so. Uh, maybe at some point, just talk about your experience with different kinds of beans and where the V60 kind of shined or was was interesting compared to an album with it. Sure, sure. So um, give a bit of a background how like I got into V60s. It's um, when when coffee was first starting out, it was kind of, very hard to find good quality uh, beans to, to do a V60 with. Um, even more so when you come to using for espresso. So a lot of time when um, a lot of baristas came together, we'd, we'd bring, you know, bring our bags of coffee together and, and we'd, we'd start sharing uh, uh, brews with each other. Um, for the main reason that you know everyone can share the same brew, um, but also that the hardness of uh, the difficulty of sometimes extracting um, light roast, which is what most of us was drinking at the time on, you know, your regular nine bar machine was very difficult. So uh, the way forward, the gateway towards the light roast was essentially a hand brew. Um, it was great in the fact that, you know, you do a hand brew, you get about 200, maybe 300 milliliters, depending on your recipe. Um, and you know, you could share it between five, six people and everyone there would essentially taste the same brew you were. Um, and as opposed to espresso it's kind of, you know, difficult to repeat a shot at times, especially on a normal, uh, regular three to nine bar machine. Um, and now, you know, now that we have the decent, it's really sort of opening the, um, the world of the light roast, um, which a lot of people got into from V60. So um, I would say a lot that if you do like the V60s um, and you want to get into espresso, um, uh, John just briefly mentioned the Rau Alange, which is essentially like an in-between, uh, in my mind, to the, the espresso strength and the sort of a filter type brew. Um, uh, I like the aspect of the Decent doing a V60. Um, simply because of the consistency it provides. Now, when we talk about consistency, um, the main variable uh, in my mind with, with, with hand brews is essentially the, the person making the brew. The person making the brew will have the greatest influence on a hand brew simply because of uh, the technique they may use to the brew equipment they may have. So what I mean by brew equipment you know, this is essentially just a, a regular V60, just a ceramic one. Um, but, you know, even even if you're using the same brewer, um, if it is plastic or metal or ceramic, the materialistic properties of your brew will also dictate, you know, how you are going to use your technique. Um, a simple way of putting it would be if you have a, a metal or glass uh, material brewer, uh, in general, you will get away with more higher temperatures um, and would be easier to brew sort of darker, darker roasts. Um, when you start getting into lighter roasts, you really want to have a higher temperature um, and you'll find that the plastic, um, uh, plastic style uh, drippers will insulate the heat a lot better. 
So um, a lot of it is to do with the barista technique and also the materials you use with the brewer, uh, but also the style of brewer. Where decent helps is that it takes away a lot of the, uh, how to say, the decision makings towards how you are going to brew um, in terms of water temperature and water volume. Um, but it also gives you a benchmark to play around with. Um, you're not second guessing, well, was my brew brewing uh, pouring technique a little bit too much at that point or did I uh, perhaps pour too much water at the start and not enough at the end and these things will generally affect the way your quality will come um, so uh, yeah so that's that's essentially what uh, how I got into it and how I really sort of looked into flavors and how it is great to sort of really share um, uh, uh, lighter roast coffees okay so I'm gonna go and finish making this brew and essentially I'm using 15 grams and it is a natural coffee um, it seems that a lot of the coffee coming out at the moment is natural coffees and I'm using the niche here um, on a pretty coarse setting um, it's almost at the coarse section of the niche so I'm just going to grind away now. In uh, just using a regular V60 paper, and I have actually cut this V60 paper so it doesn't come over the top. Um, it's strange that uh, V60 provide a number two cup, but the V60 papers generally will stick out from the top. I'll show you one here. So this is one I pre-cut, so I'll just leave that in there. So if I put a regular one on the top, you will see that it comes out maybe one or two centimeters over the top. So I've essentially just leave it flat and cut a little semicircle from here all the way over. And then that leaves me nice uh, clearance level for when I put it under decent. Um, you don't have to do this, but I find that when you put it underneath the decent, uh, the paper won't sort of interfere with the portafil handle. So when you come to uh, do a bit of agitation, um, you won't have your paper filter disrupting your uh, extractions. Okay, so I'm going to just preheat this under the decent. I have the pour over basket already inserted. So I'll just show you that here now. So this is the pour over basket. And essentially this was designed with uh, Scott Rayo and Decent, both together in collaboration. And it is a beautiful little basket in that it is essentially uh, a shallow basket. And I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see, we have nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different holes inside the basket which have been uh, precisionly drilled so that we have uh, the correct turbulence um, coming from the uh, shower screen uh, coming from the basket sorry not the shower screen but essentially what it looks like is it does look like a like a shower um, and you will see these sort of protruding out from the holes and what these do is essentially creates enough turbulence on the coffee bed to imitate the hand motions of your hand pour, uh, but also uh, to uh, agitate the grounds um, for a high uh, extraction yield extraction. Now, what I mean by that is in terms of extraction yield is that it is most likely anywhere between 19 and 23% uh, extraction yield. But what does that mean in terms of flavor? Um, a lot of people, flavor is very subjective and a lot of people have, uh, know when they uh, like a, a good brew, when it tastes good, but also know when it tastes bad. So in general, with a lot of high extraction yield uh, hand brews, uh, a lot of inexperienced tasters will generally go, ooh, that's really delicious. Um, and it's that essentially their palate telling them that this, it's got a lot of flavors in there, there's a lot going on and um, it's really you know bringing up questions in their mind oh this tastes good why does it taste good 
Um, and I think that's great. And I think that's a great starting point with, you know, all aspects of regarding taste in coffee. Um, it doesn't matter if you can taste the taste or not that people are describing, but um, it's good if you can and you build that database with them and you can taste with them in the future. But if you enjoy it and, you know, you, 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 you like what you're drinking um, and you think you can repeat it, I think it's I think that's that's as good as you can you can pretty want really. I mean from an experience wise if you enjoy something um I think I think that's great. So don't worry about if you can't taste certain flavors when you're doing this. Um you know some people find Hanbrew is a little bit light on the flavors in terms of delicacy, but it does really bring out more of the subtle flavors that espresso sometimes hides. Um yeah. Okay. So let's go back onto the brew. So I'm going to pre-wet this paper now. I'm just going to use the uh, flush button on the decent. And because this is a ceramic uh, B60, I am going to heat this up a little bit more than I normally would. And uh, while I am preparing the grounds, I will just leave this sitting in a jug full of hot water. And this will keep, will help me keep the, uh, the heat involved in the ceramic. B60. Okay. So another thing to also note is that cleaning or rinsing your filter paper with uh, hot water uh, gets rid of all the paper taste. Well, not all of it, but most of the paper taste. Um, certain papers will have more paper taste. Um, I find the non-bleach ones for some reason, maybe due to the uh, uh, less processing method, uh, has more of a paper taste and the bleach papers uh, have less of a paper taste um, so yeah so if you if you if you're not sure you can always smell your water to see if you can smell that paper taste um, generally I will just put about let's say how much have I put in uh, it's about 150 milliliters of water um, but you can probably get away with 100 milliliters of water um, and go from there so I'm just going to empty this out into here Okay, and I've got to get my grounds. These are my grounds here. And the grounds, um, like I said, are fairly coarse. I don't know if you can see them in the light there, but I'll put some in my hand. And a really good technique, uh, and I do this for espresso as well when I'm trying to find my grind, is that if you use your finger and put it on your palm and you spread your grounds, you will, one, feel the uh, texture or the coarseness of the coffee grounds. And this will really feel like a coarse grit sand, okay? And underneath, when you move this away, you can see that your hand hasn't really got any uh, brown streaks on it. There is a little bit, but there's really not much, okay? And that's essentially what you really want to see for uh, your hand brews. And when you go back to espresso, what you will see when you do that, when you push your hands in together like this, you will see a lot of a brown stain on here. Uh, and that's simply uh, because you're, you, you're, you're increasing your, uh, 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 well, decreasing your burr distance, therefore in, uh, um, decreasing the grind size of your uh, grind size particles. So there will be more sort of uh, powdery streaky marks on your palm. Um, it's a useful technique uh, with when you're uh, using new, new beans and you really don't want to waste them. Um, you'll get yourself in the rough ballpark um, before you even start. So you may even save yourself one or two grinds, you know, where you're just grinding and you found that it's too, too coarse or too fine and you make an adjustment. So in the long run, this will help you save a lot of beans. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this over here so you can see. Well, you're using a uh, niche, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm using the niche. Um, what uh, grind size did you use, so did you grind for? I mentioned before we are on the core section, uh, so where mm. it is on the numbers is around 40, 42. Now, uh, oh, wow. okay. so, yeah, so it is pretty coarse, um, but I also mm. must stress that even if you have the niche, uh, a niche zero at home, um, due to sort of different calibrations and, and, uh, and the whatnot, that your settings may be different from mine. Um, so what I suggest is, is 
uh, so this is why I recommended uh, sort of having a ballpark in, in sort of having a look at your grinds, getting used to sort of seeing the grind size and maybe even sort of uh, uh, squishing it into your palm to see if it leaves a coffee stain. So that gives you the, the ballpark where you're looking for. Uh, and then from there, you will be more familiar with your grinder um, and adjust by taste. Okay, so we'll go into adjusting by taste a bit later. Um, but uh, it's a very good question that you asked in where, whereabouts is this on the niche. Uh, and I no doubt think that a lot of people will sort of immediately go to that setting. So uh, that's kind of why I want to make them aware that even if they have the same grinder, it may not be the same, uh, same setting. Okay. Yep, got it. All right. So I'm just going to put it straight into the pre-wet uh, paper. Okay. And I just go forward and backwards and then left to right just to flatten it out. And then with a the bottom of the niche brush, it's a very useful tool. <laughs> I gently go in and I make a little divot inside. But I'm also very careful not to create extra depression or compression of the grounds because I want to keep them fluffy uh, to make sure it's basically to ensure that I get a good pre-infusion and everything is pre-wetting at the same time okay so can you see the divot inside so if I just bring it up okay uh, well someone is asking if there is another camera to show like a closer look okay yep yeah. so if I can bring it up I've just oh, moved my uh, my camera up here so uh, I'll hopefully get something mm. a bit more permanent um, but yeah, so it's essentially just, um, I've used the bottom of the brush, of the niche brush, mm. and I've just gently kneaded it inside and done a small circle until um, I've got a little bit of resistance. Um, you don't want to sort of go in really aggressively. Um, aggressively, I mean like you put, the, you put your implement or chopstick or brush or maybe finger even and you're hearing a crunching sound. If you basically hear a crunching sound, you've gone in too hard and you're basically compress compressing the bottom of the coffee at the bottom of the filter, okay? Uh, what will happen is if you compress the bottom powder, uh, bottom parts of the uh, coffee is that you will increase your chances of it choking, um, but also increasing your chances of channeling as well, where you, know, you have uh, denser pockets of coffee and the uh, water just wanting to travel around that dense pocket, okay? So, uh, where... Right. Yeah. Before you go ahead, uh, can you please... Uh, is there an option to make me the host so I can choose the camera while you're working? Because um, I think you're the host at the moment. Um, I believe John may be the host. Um, I'm not sure if I am. I'm not sure. He, he says you are. <laughs> okay. Um, can I but maybe, I think hook? he had created the Zoom uh, link days ago, so you might be right. So, so one of you guys is the host. Yeah, I think John may be the host because he, he, he um, uh, has the link. So everyone mm -hmm. got into the, the account via him. Okay. Oh, it says need to hit, uh, enter the host key to change. Someone has the host key. Uh, do you know how to search for that, Mohammed? Uh, I do not, but I will try to figure it out with John. Okay. I think John will have it. Uh, but while you're also uh, here, someone is asking what's the in and out? What's the in and out? Uh, in and out? Uh, what context for, is that you're question? Talking about, when, when you're talking about the, the pour over earlier, sorry, not about that. The pour over in and out. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I think not... they're just asking. I think they're just asking about the weight, really. Oh, okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are uh, we are putting fifteen grams in and looking to get mm. uh, two hundred and twenty-five out. Got so it. I think it's okay. about one, Those are the end, yeah. yeah one to seventeen or sixteen. I can't quite remember. I need to do the maths on that one. Uh, you see, the decent has got me lazy now in that it is creating <laughs> the magic and <laughs> I don't need to work yeah. out the ratios anymore. It's, it's kind of once I've set a profile or I'm using a profile, um, it is now become like, oh, uh, I'm tasting it. And now I'm like, oh, OK, uh, no, maybe I need to change the ratio. So that's that's what is what is happening now with the, with the DE1 is that I will generally go a lot in autopilot and only when I'm tasting it will I want to adjust something. 
And I think that's what right. I found quite useful with the decent. And when, when I first came onto the decent, it was very, oh, I'm going to change lots of things and see what it's like and, and things like that. But now it's more, I'm more toned back. Um, I'll try the profile as it's designed first and then sort of maybe change very, very uh, minor things. Well, not minor things, but things that won't really sort of get me into trouble. <laughs> because that's the it's it's the it, it, the d one can be uh so customized that you know you can get yourself into trouble um so it is very uh good in a learning tool that way but also it creates the magic that sometimes that you, you can't quite remember all the details <laughs> but it's a very good question yeah. um when when we used to do it manually um yeah we would always that would be the topic of conversation what was the what was the ratio what was the grams you use the temperature um you know which 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 kettle did you use it from even and um it was it was good to have that sort of debate um but uh, again that debate arose because of the inconsistencies involved from equipment to equipment from barista to barista recording in progress all right so, um, can should I finish off making this brew, Mohammed, or should we wait? To yeah, see yeah go ahead. Um, actually, I think John had made us or made me um, the host. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Cool. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So, as I was saying about um, compressions of the coffee grounds, so it basically we want them to be fluffy. Um, so that the pre-infusion has its maximum effect um, and we can maximize the potential of these beans. Okay, so um, I've just shown you off the, uh, the pour over basket. I'm just going to engage it now. As you can see, I have um, removed prior, prior removed the uh, drip tray and the drip cover. And I've uh, got a nice little tumbler just to catch the uh, uh, back flush water. Uh, have the decent scale set up connected to the app and a milk jug ceramic v60 15 grams of yeah uh, yunnan coffee and we are going to select the scott rio preset which is here okay not going to change anything just going to use the preset as it is and if you saw that, the red lights on the GHC was uh, in tying with this profile. Um, this profile has a preheating um, of the water tank to ensure a complete stability of the water throughout the brew. And I will show you that visually on the graph in a moment. Okay. So um, I'm just going to start this off now. Now, there are a few things that uh, aren't fully automated with this recipe in that I have to agitate the grounds at each pause uh, and then uh, wait for the next pulse to come in before I agitate again. Now, the reason Is there why... any chance you can you can get the, another camera and get it closer to the D1 and, and yeah. the shower screen so while you're brewing? So, while I do this, I can try and hold while I do and do this one-handed, which is should be okay. Okay, and I'll... Yeah, yeah, it's good. Moment. Okay, so um, as I said, during each pulse, um, I will make a certain level of agitation and the agitation at the start is much more vigorous than towards the end. Um, the agitation at the start is mainly to uh, aid pre-infusion to make sure all the grounds are wet evenly. Um, but the agitation towards the end is merely to settle the bed and also to uh, ensure that when the water is drawn down through the coffee, that it is um, through as much as the coffee as possible. Now, what you will see when you make a, a agitation motion, some of the coffee grounds will come up to the sides, okay? Now, when coffee comes up to the sides, uh, what that means is that coffee at the sides won't get brewed inside in the, in the final brew. So any coffee remaining at high will be generally under extracted. Okay, so the slight agitations towards the end will create a, a flatter bed and hopefully we will uh, wash down the grounds on the side. Okay, all right. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and press this, uh, start this extraction. So this is the Scott Rayo with 15 grams, 250 out. Okay, all right, here we go. So 
In starting, you will, you're hearing the pre-tank heating the water tank now. So there's creating water in the water tank at 35 degrees. And that just gives the, the heaters a bit of a head start to maintain the temperature throughout. So you can see the turbulence created by the shower head screens. Okay. And I'm just going to now vigorously spin. Okay. Now, it's a good note to take uh, to see that I've not gone too high on my spin. Okay, I've gone about an inch above the coffee bed. And you can see it's still bubbling. Okay. Now, the bubbling is just degassing of the uh, uh, CO2 from the coffee. And if we didn't degas this uh, from the coffee, you basically water wouldn't be able to penetrate or touch the coffee uh, to extract what it needed. So when it, the grounds of the bed is uh, fully wet is when I start to, to, uh, to agitate. And you notice that this agitation was much less than the first one. And it was more sort of a rocking motion. Now I believe there is a 30 second pause between each pulse. And each pulse is probably delivering about 60 to 70 uh, milliliters of water and we should see about four pulses uh, depending if all the water has uh, been delivered okay so the bed is wet now so I will give another little So a little bit of technique adjustment here from me with one hand, but it's all good. Um, one thing to note is when you're, when you're making the agitation, sometimes the alignment of the shower, uh, because you're moving the jug again, won't come back in. So when it comes to start, you notice on my second one, it was coming towards this edge a little bit more. So I've just realigned it a little bit better in the middle. So this one is really gentle and I generally do it right at the end to try and get the grounds at the top. And you can see now that the water is all being dispensed and there won't be any more water coming out. And we will just wait for this to draw down. We look on the time. So we were meant to get 250 milliliters out. We've got 243. That's pretty good. Uh, when I'm hand doing it by hand, um, Five milliliters, if you're not uh, adept with your uh, uh, kettle, can be can be a little bit difficult, and usually or not, <laughs> you will uh, you will go over. So two, four, three is not bad, considering we did we this was all automatic, and I wasn't doing any hand motions. The uh, completed time on the scale is two minutes thirteen seconds, um, but it is still going in the drawdown, and it's been fifty seconds from there. So I'm looking about four minutes, which is about right for this recipe. I can go to about four minutes, 30 seconds, uh, but anything beyond that, and I think you would have to make a grind change. Um, anything below three minutes or three and a half minutes, um, you could probably go finer, but if you like your coffees a little bit on the tart side, um, you probably drink it as well. Okay, so I can see it's uh, stalled a little bit towards the end. I can see a lot of fines towards the sides, okay. You can see here it's very, very dark and it's almost like a sludge, okay? So this is where it is really slowing down. Um, I think the technique with one hand could have been more vigorous as I have a lot of residual uh, sludge, I would say. So I think I definitely could have gone a little bit coarser, but I'm quite liking the time I'm getting. So I'm just coming up to four minutes now. So I'm just going to put the camera down and remove the V60 and see, I might salami this, uh, the, the back of the, the back of this brew to see if it is going bitter or not. Yeah. Someone is asking, does this tail tear after adding the coffee Two, four, three may include the coffee? Um, the, uh, the scale will tear, um, as soon as I start the extraction. So um, if they really wanted to check, they can go back onto the video and see uh, the, the moment when on the video I, I pressed the extraction button, they would see that mm. the uh, scale would go to zero, zero. And that would include the, um, the grams as well. Okay. 
So it is now finished, and the timer on here is one sixty. So it's two. So it did finish about about the four thirty mark. So that's good. Okay. So one thing uh, um, I think this is, is is due to this particular coffee. This particular coffee, the aroma is is fantastic, and um, I got really excited about this coffee. Um, this coffee is from Yunnan, um, a place that, in my opinion, is one of the new up and coming regions of the world. Um, the China government uh, incentivized a lot of the farmers to start growing coffee, and what they realized was that a lot of the the places where they couldn't grow tea was fantastic for growing coffee. Um, and that's sort of why we're seeing a lot more higher quality coffees coming out of Yunnan. A lot of uh, natural coffees um, and um, from tasting the coffees over the last five years, the, the, the quality of the coffee is, is, is just getting better and better. Um, so this coffee we got from the China Barista Champion who used it for his competition for the WBC. And it is it is very standout in that the flavors are very easy to pick out, um, and everyone I've given this to has either not liked it because of the flavors. Um, it has a lot of rum, sort of liqueur, chocolatey um, spice, um, but I think that is due to the roast. It is on the darker end. They roast it for espresso, uh, but we're making it as a V sixty here. Um, but um, in terms of the flavors, the, 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 the flavors are very clean um, and the V60 pulls all of the flavor characteristics that I, I, I've, I've come to learn from this coffee. Um, and I think that's what's really fantastic about Decent in that it, its ability to bring out these delicate flavors from an espresso roast but not have the bitter, I think is, is, is really great. And to do that as a hand brew, um, historically when we used to not get such high quality beans and we, we were, we were, I think we were uh, under extracting a lot of our brews, um, uh, taking on the, the, the sort of Japanese style with the brews finishing in about two minutes. Um, whereas a lot of the brews now we're, 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 we're going about three to four minutes extractions. So someone is asking if we can check out the graph from the mm, last brew. That's a very good one. Okay. So if we look at the graph here, okay. So the brown lines um, was when I was agitating the, the, brew, uh, the coffee on the scale, okay. Now, it didn't affect my brew because I didn't have any parameters in, in, in sort of uh, uh, dosing by weight on the water volume. Um, but what, what is useful on here is, I guess, the times at which the pulses came in. So we can see that um, after the pre-infusion, there was a 30 second bloom before the second pulse, okay? And um, pressure wise, we're not really focusing on pressure because we're more concerned about the flow rate. So the flow rate was a very high flow rate, um, or almost seven milliliters a second, um, simply for the agitation, to gain the agitation from the uh, nine holes on the, on the basket. Um, if we had a slower uh, flow rate, I think we would have seen a, a less of an agitation. But um, if we had less agitation, then our expected yield or concentration and strength of the final brew would be a lot less. So the combination of the high flow rate with the holes and the stability of the temperature. So if I look at this temperature line here, okay now it may look like it is pretty wavy okay but if we look at the graph uh, the dotted line is the uh, desired temperature and the actual curve is what was being uh, outputted uh, above the above the uh, uh, outputted in the sensor basically the, the, uh, the sensor which is normally above the puck um, now you will see it going up and down up and down and this correlates with the flow rate so uh, when we have a higher flow rate, the uh, stability of the temperature or the temperature will generally increase because that is essentially where the temperature is coming from. It's coming from the water. So we can see it does go above. Um, we can see 
see. So what is the scale here? So it does go above one, uh, 101, 101 and a half degrees C at some points. Um, but uh, when we think about the distance that is from the, the top of the pour over basket to the surface or the coffee slurry on the top, that space will actually decrease the temperature of the water. So this is the, one of the reasons why we have such a high temperature on these profiles in anticipation of that heat loss. Um, and will sort of also signify where the main variable in hand brews comes from, is from the temperature loss. Um, a good example would be uh, if you use a normal kettle and pour into a gooseneck kettle, um, that pouring into the kettle uh, will take away heat. The goose kettle, if not preheated, will also take away heat. Um, and essentially you're climbing an uphill battle uh, when it comes to heat. So um, if we look at the variance of the uh, temperatures here, it's not very much. Um, so the variance really is about two degrees. Um, so I'm not really sure on what the temperature difference would be on the top of the bed. I'm quite curious to find out. Uh, I do have a, a infrared uh, temperature gun here. See if I can find that in a moment, um, and, and maybe on the next drew I'll find and I'll have a little have a little check. But um, it would be interesting to see what the temperature is on the uh, when the water is touching the coffee. Um, I would wouldn't be surprised if I see maybe a six seven degrees temperature loss, maybe even more. Um, if, especially if the coffee beans are cold, um, to see what our final brew brew temperature is. Um, but yeah, uh, something to find out, I guess. I don't know if anyone else knows that has done their own tests um, to see on the pour over baskets. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd love to find out if anyone uh, has either got a gun as well. Okay, so back to the graph. Um, I think I was mentioning about pressure. Um, so pressure is not really um, a thing we focus on in this preset. We, we, we focus more on the flow rate. So the high flow rate uh, for, the dis uh, for the agitation and the, uh, uh, of the grounds when they're from the holes uh, and the temperature stability here. On the right hand side, you can kind of see pre-infusion times and different steps. And um, these can all be programmed in. So it did stop at, what's it say here, 230, or the total was 280, and the final brew was uh, 243, if I remember off the top of my head. So 243, so 40, uh, 37 milliliters was absorbed by the coffee, which is about right. Uh, we'd expect uh, two grams of water to every gram of coffee. Um, so that is a good point to note when if you do use the uh, stop at water volume, okay, you can see it is at 265. Um, the reason it's 265 is I've used this profile a few times and I've noticed that sometimes it's not as accurate um, in terms of uh, maybe half an ounce to 10 milliliters. So you know, I will adjust here and generally I will get myself quite close to the ballpark. But if you wanted to use your stop at weight, you can also use that and it is more accurate. But the reason I don't like using it on the preset, uh, on this preset is because of when I make agitations, it will also affect the data that the DO1 is taking on board. Okay. Ah, uh, also this is a very important feature, track water volume. Um, so if you're using the stop at water volume, um, it's important to make sure you have this set at the correct uh, time you want to start tracking your water. So here it is uh, after pre-infusion, so it doesn't account for the 30 to maybe 60 milliliters of water uh, that you've added on top for pre-infusion. So black and white, the water will only track water, uh, the DU1 will only track the water after pre-infusion. You can change it to other steps, so after the blooming step or after the third pulse, um, but generally you will just do, for this preset, um, after pre-infusion. Okay, does anyone else have any more questions on the graph while I'm here or the settings or why I have certain settings on? There seem to be no questions on the graph. Okay, that's cool.
Uh, is there any other questions popped up so far, or can I move on? No, someone uh, someone uh, asked if they they have half dialed the stag X and can do a brew and uh, and measure. So they said they're setting it up now. So I told them to go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. So if anyone um, yeah. is confident enough to come on board and, and come on camera, uh, that would be great. Uh, always good to see other people brew and to see what techniques they use and, 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 and uh, share their experience. So yeah, if you, yeah. you've got some coffee, uh, you've got your DU1 set up, uh, pop it in the chat that say you, you, you would like to have a go uh, and we'll, we'll bring you on board when you're ready. So, yeah, when they are ready, I will, I will switch the camera. So it's just go ahead. Go yeah. On. Ah, so Luca, yeah, so when you're ready, just give you a shout and we'll, we'll, we'll switch the camera over to you. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back and um, put this camera back over here and try this lovely brew. So um, I didn't try it um, immediately because it's a little bit hot um, and V60s I generally find uh, a moment of cooling uh, helps with the flavor or, or with the perception of flavor um, it's not that the flavor is not there it's just that your, your olfactory system can't taste it yet so uh, it's always good to sort of leave it to cool down have a chat <laughs> uh, you know um, and and sort of enjoy the aroma while it cools down hmm so it's really, really peaty now. Um, and I think that is um, on the grind setting is a little bit on the finer side and it's sort of really peaty and licorice-y. Uh, all great flavors, uh, it's all very enjoyable. Um, but it, in terms of what I'm looking for in a V60, I, I like mine to be really refreshing. Um, and I don't know whether it's the style of the coffee in terms of the processing, um, but it is, it's really rich. Um, rich to the point where I'm, 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 I'm sort of, you know, it's not Moorish where I want, I want to keep having more, but it's kind of rich to the point where, oh, that's, that's something uh, unusual and um, really aromatic. Um, and the flavor really changes in my mouth. So that's, that's um, pretty cool. So that's really licorice coming out. All I'm, all I'm tasting right now is licorice. Um, uh, I don't actually like licorice that much, just to say that, but um, it's not a negative uh, flavor note. Um, but um, yeah, I think I can do a little bit better on that brew and probably adjust the uh, grind setting for next time. But thoroughly really enjoyable. And um, for the amount of effort that you put in, in terms of setting it up and things like that, um, I would say it's not really any, anything more than what you would normally do in a normal uh, manual hand brew. Um, you know, you, you, you're making sure your temperature of your water is stable. You've, you know, you, you're still cleaning your filters and grinding your beans, but you're, you're, you're just cutting out all that sort of hand motion in terms of brewing, uh, looking at the clock, um, and maybe calculating, uh, uh, do I need to add more for the next pour or when am I going to pour my next pour? Um, all those things are very time dependent and take a lot of time. Um, as you saw when I was doing it on the DE1, it is, it's much more linear. It's, it's, you know, once you start the button, all you're focusing on is, is waiting for the pulse to start, give it a bit of agitation or, or, or a vigorous agitation showing pre-infusion and, and you're generally all gravy. Um, I have yet to have a, a, a pour over from the DE1 that I didn't want to drink. Um, but that is quite the opposite on a lot of the hand brews in the early days when I was learning, uh, when I was finding out what made good uh, hand brews. Um, you know, a lot of them were sink shots. Well, sink, sink brews, you could say. Um, and, and, and that's what I really like about it. And was the most surprising thing I found on The Decent in that... I had quite a lot of reservations on it because I like the theater of of making a hand brew. Um, I spent a lot of time researching the Japanese hand brewers where they they actually brew very slowly with not a lot of agitation, um, simply because the, the roast style that they were using was very dark. 
um, at that time and you know they were they weren't sort of drawing out the the really sort of Dutch coffee oxidated oily uh, and burnt notes that the, the, the roast was uh, also providing okay so so uh, someone is asking um, does a decent V60 taste different or better than doing it by hand ah so yes so I, I was just trying to allude to that in that I think in my experience, even when I'm going out to cafes or, or doing it myself, um, I find that it's very hard to get that high extraction uh, yields, uh, especially at home when you may be doing it from a kettle, your, your regular kettle. Um, I have a V60 at home. I've had, uh, I've been through all the various uh, um, brewers, but what I found is it's not Uh, I guess I guess I was very humbled when doing hand brew in that I was thinking, oh, it's the equipment I was using and not myself, um, and I think that's what is 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 very eye opening when you're when you're coming to coffee, in that the variables you see uh, or can take hold of really affect the way the coffee brews, and uh, with hand brews especially uh, because of the technique wise. Um, and that's what I said at the start. It's 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 very dependent on what you choose, uh, and how you brew it, uh, and the recipe you use uh, will dictate how good of a brew you do. But when you come to the decent, because a lot of the things like ratios and um, water volumes at certain times have been decided for you, your um, your consistency of brews uh, will be tenfold better than what you can do at home um, and that's what I mean by I originally had some reservations uh, towards the the, the hand best uh, the, the, the pour of a basket simply for this reason it was taking away the theater uh, of what I loved about hand brew but after a few brews uh, with with some of the colleagues at decent um, Hannifer especially um, it's it's it just you know I can't I can't make a better brew <laughs> consistently and 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 that's that's what it is at the end of the day i, I feel i could um uh, but the amount of effort involved uh, in in getting to that point um it's much easier to utilize the the d1 and technology to help you um in, in getting a better cup um okay uh, ahmed is saying sometimes when i brew on decent it brings better taste than the hand brew um it's tasting better than the ham uh, better than the hand brew or no. bitter bitter more bitter than the hand brew yeah, yeah. okay right. yeah. um so i think what we could do there is you could look at the temperature or the grind size predominantly um you could see clues into uh the 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 total length of time your brew took so um uh, if it is going beyond four and a half minutes, uh, generally or not, it, it will will start to pull a lot of the uh, over extracted flavors. Um, if you're going to four minutes thirty, like this brew here, um, you will sort of get the more heavier flavors, which I alluded to before. So like you know licorice, uh, chocolate, um, uh, and 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 sort of more spicier flavors coming through. So um, in terms of bitter, um, from my experience, um, I've experienced maybe one or two. Um, and that, what the, those brews that were one or two bitter um, were still drinkable. Um, but why were they bitter? It was simply, it was a new coffee uh, and we were still trying to find our grind. Um, and they were the first uh, sort of one or two brews from that batch. So um, what I would say was, uh, you know, if you're finding your brews from the DE1 bitter, um, one, have a look at your grind settings first, uh, coarsen it up a little and see if that shortens your brew time. Um, if that is not the case, um, it could be that, you know, you might be using a Ethiopian coffee, which is quite synonymous for creating extra fines and, create, uh, and warranting a finer grind setting. But when you have a finer grind setting uh, for pour overs, the danger is it will stall or choke. Uh, what I mean by that is the water won't, it will just seem as though the water is just sitting there 
uh, and, and taking a very long time to go down. Um, so that sort of slow drawdown towards the end could be the reason why it is bitter. Um, uh, another technique you could use if you're doing that and you, you kind of, you realize it's going to take a long drawdown. Um, you could just take that, um, that last portion of the brew off and try your brew as it is. Um, so the, 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 essentially the coffee that has dripped through, try it. Um, if it is too tart, then you could um, add more of the what was left over in the V60. But you will find the more you add from the stalled V60, the more bitter uh, and the more astringent you, your, your brew will get. So what am I sort of introducing here? I'm introducing how to sort of salami balance your shot um, in order not to waste too much coffee. Um, and that's where I learned a lot of these techniques from in that, you know, uh, Hong Kong 10 years ago, there wasn't a lot of great coffee. So the great coffee we had, we, it was very precious. Uh, and we'd have to, you know, drink them all within like a, a week or two uh, of them, you know, coming of age. Um, so, you know, it, 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 we really didn't like to waste coffee, especially in hand brews. And, and this was one of the techniques that we adapted from espresso. Um, so espresso salami, where you use a set time to take off certain parts of the espresso shot and taste it to sort of see uh, what tastes are coming out at different parts of the extraction. And you will find this is uh, uh, this, sim this theory holds true to a certain extent uh, in hand brews in that um, the first portion, let's say 30, 40% of the brew will actually dictate the balance of the acidity and the sweetness of the brew. Um, the last portions of the, uh, uh, of the hand brew will generally dictate the strength. Um, so essentially you're just building it up to the, the uh, grams to water ratio. Um, so the most important part of the brew essentially is the, f is the first 30, 40%. Uh, and then the, you know, as I said, the last 60, 70 uh, is, is all, all about the brew strength. Okay, so I hope you found that answered your question. Um, okay, sometimes brew is this, but I'll try to. Yes, Scott, so there is a lot more control over the temperature and timing of flow with the decent pour over. Um, and I think I believe uh, I was talking to John w when I first started at Decent and he was saying how um, he was excited with the double XL in that um, the, the extra power from the steam heaters essentially made it possible to do larger brews on the, v uh, on the Decent um, as opposed to um, just being able to do like 15 grams and 20 grams. Uh, I believe now we were able to go all the way up to 30 grams and brew 500 milliliters out. Um, and just seeing the performances of the newer models, I think that's, it's, you know, very likely that, you know, you can do that 30 gram half a liter recipes, which is, I think is more common, um, especially when in countries that are uh, used to having filter coffee, um, you know, they're, they're used to having a large amount of coffee. So, uh, hand brews generally may be a bit too short for them, um, so uh, a longer, a larger recipe uh, suits them better. Okay. Uh, just to cut in there for a second. Yeah. This is actually the camera. <laughs> um, that's okay if I don't have the camera. Um, we did not mention yet uh, pre-warming the tank, ah. I don't think. Oh, um, uh, I think I did, we, uh, briefly, yes. Okay, sorry, I missed it. No, it's all um, good. So as we've gone up with amperage, we, our normal machines are 6.5 amps, the XL is 9.5 amps, and we're working on a 15 amp version right now. Um, we can do a faster and faster flow rate and maintain temperature. So uh, yesterday I did a test, and I was at a full 100 centigrade for three minutes at 7.5 mils per second. Oh, nice. And that's the fastest we've ever seen. Yeah. So um, at that point, you know, what is that? Four liters or something like that? Uh, no, half a liter a minute. That's half, it's four and yeah, about half a liter a minute um, at full temperature. So I think we can make large pour overs now with this new model that's about to come out. Awesome. Or you preheat the water tank, uh, <clears throat> but that's a bit slower. So if you're a cafe, the, the more powerful models, the double XL, the triple XL coming, um, 
let you do multi-person pour overs easily. Oh, awesome. So I guess the half a liter is essentially like uh, two, two servings, two really healthy servings of coffee. Um, and um, yeah, I think, that, I think that's, that's a pretty good serving uh, to go by. Uh, especially in a commercial aspect, um, I b- I believe like uh, let's say let's take the American market. So have a lot of the brew, um, uh, a lot of them um, consumers are, are are brew sort of drinkers, um, and then it's followed by espresso, then then hand brews. Um, it's quite interesting in that Asia is is a little bit uh behind on the brews uh in terms of filter coffee. But is more uh, uh, more focused on sort of uh, pour over style coffees, um. I th- I think that's more in tune with the taste preferences. Um, V sixty is generally a little bit more subtle, um, and delicate. Uh, tea likes it even some people describe. Uh, whereas you know your your brew coffee filter coffee is 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 more sort of uh what people would expect from coffee, uh coffee flavors uh but you you do get um very nice high extraction yield brews um and and i do enjoy a filter coffee as well um but um in the terms of accessibility um yeah i i generally lean towards the v60 more um you know ease of use a lot of people have them um and um yeah you you can it's it's a quite flexible with light roast so um, all right, um, we actually have Lucas. He he's ready with his pour over. If uh, if you guys don't mind, you can switch over to him. Yeah, and yeah, then that's you great. can just kind of like guide him through. And yeah, Lucas, you good to go? Uh, let's see. That's okay. All right. Well, he said I'm good in uh, yep, private I'm message, good. but we'll give. Ah, oh, there you go. All okay. right. Hey, Lucas, now, right, let me switch over to you very quickly. Hi. Um, hi, Lucas. Hi. Uh, is it Luca or Lucas? I'm sorry. If, if, it's uh, Luca. Oh, Luca. Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, do we do we have uh, audio and... Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Everything all right? Okay, Very cool. clear. All right, so I've just switched over to my phone. So what, what I thought I'd do is just show you guys... Um, my sort of go on the stag X um, and the reason why this might be kind of interesting to us is because the diameter of the stag X is, is pretty like it's it's not that much different from the diameter of the the bottom of the where you get sprays going yes yes um, so this has sort of become my kind of go-to brewer recently mm-hmm. um, I haven't done lots of um, decent pour over with it but um, but uh, I did sort of dial it in at the moment and I'm drinking a coffee with it and it's quite good yeah um, so in terms of the setup I thought the important points are uh, I mean Bello makes some, you know, some some really nice products that barely need a lot of modification to get them to perform satisfactorily to me. Yeah. Um, so with the the stag, um, it's got this plastic bit here that's a gasket to make it fit into Fellow's, um, you know, proprietary vessel type thing. Right. And that yeah. will make it not sit level with other stuff if you're not careful. So oh, I've just removed it, so right. then you, you get a flat area here. Nice. Um, it also has these these holes set up down here, which hopefully you can see now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has these ridges to stop sort of clogging um, as the brew progresses. Uh, but I didn't think that they worked very well. So mm-hmm. if you chop up a mesh and fold it over like this... Mm-hmm then you, you get that. Um, and that enables you to use a V60 filter, which is just, I've just folded over so that it kind of fits in, uh-huh. um, rather than using Fellow's oh. proprietary filter that's much more expensive and pleated and doesn't sort of stick up against the walls. So and, what and I'm the, hoping the, Those ones are the ones that, that this are... Means, with the waves, right? Sorry? Uh, those are the, the papers yeah, that are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. They're, they're filters with the waves. And what I don't know is how much bypass yes. and stuff like that that's yeah. giving you. Yeah. So with these, and I'm, I'm sort of buggering it up a bit because I'm doing it with, with oh, one Oh, it's hand. all good. It's all good. <laughs> but what you can do is you can, you can get these filters sort of um, jammed right up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so hopefully that's resulting in less bypass from the sides and forcing the the water to really come through the coffee bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's what we're hoping. Anyway, I've, I've I've been able to get some brews from it that have tasted quite good. I've been able to get good good brews from the V60. So you don't necessarily have to go off and buy one of these if you've already got a V60. But if you're considering buying a brewer and you don't have one already, then this might be an interesting one to look into. Um, so I've just I've just gone through and preheated it. I'll just dump that out behind me. Um, so the, the the things that I did want to kind of just point out here are um, you've you've got this going on on your machine, Paul. But yes. I've just got this you know tomato paste jar type thing which I'm sitting under here, and that's because people should know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that there's a little water exit Teflon hose there. Yeah. Um, so so you, want, you want to be able to collect any little bits of water that it spits out there. Um, and then the next thing to know that, that I've found is that it's important to back flush the group head um, because any... any uh, coffee grounds that are there can sort of pretty easily clog up the basket. So that's that's now locked in. We've we've got a preheated and rinsed um, preheated and rinsed V60. Sorry, preheated and rinsed Stag X. That's good to go. Um, we've got yeah. So I've got some pre ground coffee here, and um, as you as you were saying before paul um mm-hmm. it's i've got 15 grams here and it's, it's very coarse yes um because what i like about this is that i've i've got this theory that if you can have coarse ground coffee that doesn't clog up the filter towards the end of the brew and um and you can get that up to a high extraction level I feel like more agitation can usually result in yes. more flavor with greater sort of clarity of flavor. That's right. So as you were doing, this is, you know, Rayo's nest point. So yes, there we go. We've got the, we've got the nest. Um, and then the other thing that I'm doing is I've got an object, which doesn't really matter what it is, as long as the brewer can sit on the scale can sit on it and that's just to raise that scale up so that um so that the streams are really coming through as close as possible to that Uh, yes so we had 15.1 grams there i'll just tap to start and i'll start my timer running if it wants to um now i've just got the tablet booting so we're we're not going to have the benefit of the graphs um, but the tank does have um, the tank does have uh, preheated water in it, mm-hmm. um, and there we go. Now, Paul, would you sort of swirl this here just to yeah? Um, I, as soon as the just a little swirl. Yeah, as soon as I see the the whole coffee grounds have uh, covered, I, I will swirl quite vigorously. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Martin. So cool. So I've I've, I've swelled that so that should be pretty pretty saturated um and uh so this is this is an ethiopian natural coffee um it's a 74 um 100 um from say and this is a coffee that will really clog towards the end of the brew ah yeah Um, so i've gone quite coarse on this um, so that hopefully we'll, we'll get it through. Um, Muhammad just asked in the chat, what profile am I using? I'm using the um, 18 gram 
um, V60 profile, but I've only got 15 grams here, so I'm going to cut this short at about probably 270 grams of water or something like that, and then we'll see how we go. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping that this will get us a pretty quick brew, maybe around the two-and-a-half, three-minute mark. But I'm, I'm, as I said, I, I haven't really dialed this in or anything. And we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, I've, I just made another brew of this before, mm -hmm. which I'm drinking, and that was on a much um, finer grind setting. Um, and that resulted in uh, a TDS of about 1.7, probably an extraction yield of about 24%. Uh, it's quite low in bitterness and it's got quite a lot of aroma and flavour. So it's, it was really quite an impressive brew there because it should have been much bitterer at yeah. that sort of high extraction level and everything. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't. So we'll, we'll just get one more pulse coming through here. We'll see how we go. But um, we're at two and a half minutes already. So um, it's looking... It's looking kind of pretty unlikely that we're going to get my desired fast brew temperature on this because there's quite a lot of um, of water in the top. Yeah. Still to drain through, so it's draining through quite slowly now, and this is that sort of clogging issue that I was talking about before. It may be that, um, you know, as you were saying, Paul, that I can go even like way coarser on this and, and this is you know kind of um over time you work out what what works with your grinders for different coffees and everything yeah. and i usually find that um ethiopian coffees usually really really clog and need um need quite a coarser grind setting than sort of central americans um usually do so yeah, so it looks like we're we're probably going to end up at about four minutes or something. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's sort of about all I all, all I really have to say and to show people. Um, but uh, what I will do is once that's finished brewing, I will um, chill it down and take some um, TDS measurements, and I can dump them in the chat, and I can. Uh, tell you guys what this brew was like. Yeah. Um, um, just, yeah just, Jesus. just while we got you on camera, minutes, Luca. Ten seconds already. Um, just while yeah, we go got ahead. you on camera, um, I'm curious because uh, when you were talking about the uh, the data you got and, and the the TDS and expected yields from the first brew you did, um, I, I was <laughs> along the same path. I was thinking, oh uh, yeah, that one. Um, I was thinking, oh yeah, maybe probably would have tasted good, but maybe it was a bit bitter. That was the first thing I, I, I said in my head. And, and and then you, you answered my question for you in that you, you expected it to be a little bit bitter, but actually it was quite pleasant. Um, I, I find that a lot with the yeah. DU1 in that sometimes, you know, I, I see a stall or I think that, oh, my, my grind setting is too fine. Um, but then I taste it and, and actually it's it's either has no bitter or it has very minimal bitter that I'm not offended by. Um, do you have a theory on why that is the case with the DU one in terms of its brewing style? Like, is it something to do with the 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 turbulence or or maybe the stability of the temperature? Um, do you have any theories towards that at all? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, basically, I I don't have any sort of DE specific theories about it. Yeah. Um, so it looks like this brew was about five minutes and ten seconds, which is is probably just it's probably just really too long for. For, um, for, you know, th this sort of brewer and coffee and this sort of dose and yield. Um, but, but uh, yeah, in terms of, in terms of um, bitterness um, on this specifically, I guess what I would say is um, this coffee is from Say and um, if you, basically with, with any roaster, you know, they're always, they're always going to have one particular roast defect that they're more likely to have than anything else. Yes. Um, and if you were going to criticise, say, for any sort of roast defect, you would be criticising them for being on the more underdeveloped edge of the scale. So right. with their coffees, basically, with their coffees and a couple of other people who sort of roast similarly to them, it, it, you, it's just it's just almost impossible to... to 
over extract them and to get bitterness out of them you'll, mm. you'll get sort of sourness and underdeveloped um and and if you extract them at two courses setting and, and you under extract them then they'll, they'll be really punishingly sort of sour and they won't have much aroma to them right um yes. So that's one reason why this coffee in particular isn't really punishing me for for you know long long brew time and um, and for over extraction. Uh, I think that the other reason is um, I'm using Ben Chia's um, crazy experimental burrs that he you know keep, keeps on. He's he's really done a very um, Herculean job of, of kind of. <laughs> assembling a large collection of um of burrs and and trying out different geometries and stuff and and these are um some burrs that he's come up with that um they're 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 designed specifically for filter they yes if you grind with them touching um you will still get espresso that just gushes through right Um, so these are burrs that even at a fine grind setting, they probably don't have many very fine particles. They probably tend to give you a very coarse particle size. Right. Um, even at, at very, very fine, like fairly fine grind settings. Mm. Um, and, and for that reason, I'd kind of expect, I'm kind of surprised that this brew um, took as long as it did i would have expected it to oh, go yes, yeah. quite a bit faster yeah um but but this is this is literally a coffee that that i've got i've, I've only brewed the two brews that you know i br- brewed this brew and the brew that's in the jug <laughs> so so that's all that, that i i have to i have on that um but in terms of the the attractive points about the u- using the the decent um it's really that you know as you were saying before there's there's a question of um is is it the optimal program of pulses and Mm. and temperature and and combinations and all of that well maybe it is maybe it isn't probably it isn't for any any given coffee but the important point is that it's repeatable it's out it's out of your hands you don't have to worry about did you do the same number of swirls and pours at this time? Did yeah. you do them at that time? You know, it, it's just, it's always going to be fairly consistent. And if you've, if you're taking all of those decisions out of the equation, really the, the, the only thing that's left in terms of the technique is if we're doing, if we're swirling the, the bed around or anything like that. Um, and, um, and, uh, that that's you know a, a lot fewer variables than we would have if we were using a pouring kettle indeed yeah um and so yeah you know it, it's um it means that ultimately we're going to really focus on getting our dose and our our yield and grind setting dialed in and you you've got to say that probably if you're dialing in any coffee um, the, the grind setting, the dose and the yield are probably amongst the variables that make the most difference. Yeah. So using the pre-programmed settings, um, I mean, they, they're, they're sufficiently good enough. We can probably establish that from mm. what we're brewing because we're, we're brewing coffees that we enjoy. Mm. So, so having taking those out of the equation means that we can focus on the most important variables and really try and, you know, get them dialed in and, and nail that, um, which hopefully, you know, helps us to get, get better, better quality, um, you know, better quality brutes. So now I'm probably at the point where I can kind of give this one a shot and we can, we can see what it's like. Um, but why don't I, why don't I just um, uh, shut off, me and hand back to you guys um and then i'll just um in the meantime i'll measure this and um and then i can pop in the chat you know what what this is like and yeah um and that'll that'll give you guys some ideas and it's not it's it's probably not going to be a dialed in and very good bro but i just wanted to sort of you know 
um, let you guys see uh, what what I've done here, and um, and of course you guys can can all critique um, uh, how how I could have improved it once I once I dumped the the data into the chat about what it tasted like and what the numbers were. Like. <laughs> all right, Lika. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thank you, Thank you okay. so much. Cool. No worries. All right. See ya. Also, a nice washer. I have exactly the same one. <laughs> yeah, this is this is it, 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 it keeps all the mess out of the way, you know. Oh it's, nice. It's, oh wow. It's just, okay, that's a much nicer setup than mine. No, <laughs> it's it's just it's it just means that you know, you, you close this and you don't have to uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a messy bench. Or or, or it's oh, more nice. like out of sight, out of mind, right? Cheers. Right? <laughs> all right. Fantastic. So it's always good to sort of see how other people use their equipment and, uh, and, 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 and brew at home. Um, I always find it fascinating. Um, and thank you, Luca, for, for giving your insights. Um, it's, cool. it's always good as well to sort of see how, how, how they think about it and the reasons why they do certain things. Um, but yeah, he, he, he brought up some good points in, in, in terms of, you know, uh, especially the little flush tube, little cup, only a few drops drip out, do drip out, but it is good point to put in. And, um, I like the way, uh, Luca was also raising his, uh, scale and also his carafe and, and brewer to get as close as he possibly could to the shower screen. Um, I believe this would uh, reduce his variables even further in, in temperature loss will be less. And um, yeah, I think um, it was very interesting to hear about his, his, his new burst that he was using. Um, I think uh, in terms of what he would be tasting, his, I suspect, you know, him getting 24% expected extraction yield on his first brew, um, that is very, very high. Um, usually I'd expect 22, 23 to start getting to the point where I'm not very comfortable drinking it. So that's why we were sort of saying expecting it to be bitter, but it wasn't. Um, and, and I think uh, Luca alluded to the point where his burr sets were probably producing hard, well, a lot less fines than you would expect from a normal grinder. Um, the clogging, even though he, he was having a lot less grinds, the clogging was uh, most likely his uh, origin-based beans, which were from Ethiopia which are, as we mentioned before, uh, quite well known for clogging up grinds. Okay. All right, awesome. Yeah. All right, so um, in last night, um, just while we've got a bit of a moment where I can just talk, um, I was sort of researching other recipes that I could potentially uh, program into the Decent or maybe even uh, any techniques or recipes that I could use uh, to further enhance the recipe that we're already using. Um, so um, in, in researching a lot of this, um, especially when I first started to brew, um, I did look at a lot of uh, the Japanese style brewers. Um, uh, one person who, who is a brewer champion, uh, Tetsuo, uh, Tetsuo Katsuya, he, um, he has a very interesting theory and he breaks up uh, the brews into fifths um, so all of his recipes he, 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 he'll pour his entire uh, water volume in five pours and this will include the pre-infusion um, and I tr when I first tried it out um, a few years back um, it was quite interesting because it did have a lot of pauses and um, went over three minutes which I was a little bit uncomfortable about because um, I was used to sort of doing two and a half minutes, three minute brews, um, quite fast brews. Um, and as I mentioned, I was most likely under extracting at that point. Um, but I think it was necessary with the quality of the beans I was having. Uh, but as I got a lot better, um, I was looking for more high extraction yields. Um, so um, this recipe was the first recipe where I was like, Oh, okay. This uh, my my technique could be a lot better. Um, I should really look at the numbers and 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 decide how much water at what point do I really want to use. Um, 
Now, what's interesting about his his recipe is that he he does sort of say you can change the flavor of your brews, um, depending on uh, how much water you apply at where. Um, so specifically, the first portion of the brews, um, you he would generally use less to increase the sweetness uh, and have more water in the middle to last third. Uh, of the brewing process to uh, essentially make up the brewing strength. So um, I tried this out um, last night um, and pre-programmed a, a recipe in. Um, it looks very similar to the pulses of uh, the Scott Rayo uh, preset, but um, it is different in that it, its volume of water is a lot less and the proportions of the volumes of water is is dictated by when uh, when it is in the, in the brew. So for example, the, the pre-infusion cycle uh, would only give out 15, uh, 30 to 45 uh, milliliters of water. Um, any, if you adjust this, this water that was meant to be placed there will be placed later on in the recipe. So um, I'll bring this preset up on the D1 and you can have a look. All right, so if we look in here, okay. So as you can see, I've got, um, you're only dosing 30 milliliters. Oh, wait a second. Um, it's only dosing 30 milliliters at the start for the preset. Um, and it is, blooming for 45 seconds instead of 30 seconds like the one in Scott Rayo's recipe. So um, the increase in uh, blooming uh, and the pauses, uh, which are at 45 seconds, if I get the pause here, uh, and I change it to 40 seconds here. Okay. Um, I think really help it to gain the uh, uh, um, high TDS that we're looking for. Um, but what was interesting in that he really sort of honed out to you um, why it is important to sort of look at the first parts of the extractions. So um, he alludes to the point that the long, uh, the more water you use during pre-infusion and the first pour after pre-infusion um, will give you more sort of uh, heavier flavors like chocolate uh, spice, um, things that you would uh, usually expect from a uh, medium dark to darker roast coffees. Um, when you use less water um, in, in the first portion, um, you will find that the acidity and the um, sweetness will go up. Um, and this is kind of alluding to the points of um, what flavors are extracted out um, at, at, at certain points of the extraction. So early points, early, extra, early, early extractions of, uh, uh, <laughs> early uh, extracted solubles at the early points of the extraction, that was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? Um, it, it, it is just tied to, tied to the sweetness and acidity. So um, in this recipe here, what I've tried to do is maximize the acidity. So uh, I've essentially used less water at the start uh, and increase the water I use towards the end. So you can see here, I only use 60 grams here, but that's because I only use 30 grams here, so I'm making up the water volume. But then after that, it is all 45, 45, 45. So essentially I have five pours, including the pre-infusion, and I look to finish around the same time, within about four minutes, four and a half minutes. Um, and the only difference is uh, the amount of water and the time in between, which is elongated a bit more. Now I found that um, when using this recipe, I can use uh, more coffee than um, stated on the recipe, um, simply because I've got more pulses, therefore I have more uh, uh, time for agitation. Um, and I don't know whether it is something to do with the increased pulses or the volume uh, of the water that you're using at certain points. I suspect it's the latter, 
um, that is really affecting the flavors in your brews. Um, now I've only just really started playing around with this, but even with my first few pours, um, I was really sort of seeing uh, differences, in t especially in terms of acidity um, in the cup. So the shorter water you use for pre-fusion and the first pour uh, brings a lot of, uh, much more brighter cup. Um, and the opposite is true if you use more water during those stages. So I thought that was quite interesting, just you know, having a look at, into uh, what can I change during, um, during your B60 or, or pour overs with, with the Decent. Um, because you can customize pretty much everything in terms of temperature, flow rate, uh, time, um, you know, times you want to pause before the next uh, pulse. Um, you know, the, the, it's really up to you and how you want to uh, um, get your characteristic of your cup in your final brew. So um, I have actually tried to use the stop by weight and volume here, uh, but what I found uh, difficult is because of the agitation the stop by weight is not so useful, but what is more useful is the maximum volume being able to use. Um, it took me a little bit of playing around with um, to get it to become accurate enough where I, I think it's useful. Um, but you can see that you know it's not much difference from if I just didn't agitate it as compared to agitating. So I found this figure here by running the recipe without agitating so I could really see if it stopped where it wanted to stop. Um, and then when I was going about doing it the other way, uh, trying to find the, the value for this one, it was really about trial and error uh, and, and not sort of touching it as I was going along. Um, once you find the rough ballpark of it, um, you'll find that it does stick true to all the other ones. Um, I'm not sure why that was 55, maybe it was the, when you're pressing in the hand motion, but um, essentially it is quite accurate. Uh, maybe I could run a brew with this right now and hopefully I will do a proof of concept. <laughs> um, but yes, this was very interesting for me in that I could change, start changing the parameters of the, the taste and the characteristics of the cup. Um, so if I tie this back up here and I'll start getting on the final brew. Um, Mohammed, is there any other questions happening on the forum right now? On the chat room? No, just Luca, Lucas shared his uh, his uh, stats from the last brew, if you want to take a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you just reel them out while I'm uh, sort of setting up for the next one? Sure, yeah, yeah. So he's basically saying that uh, the dose is 15.1 gram, yield is 247.5 gram, uh -huh. TDS 1.47, EY 24%. Simple filter formula yield, TDS slash dose. EY very sensitive to the TDS reading, so true. EY range probably uh, somewhere between 22 to 24%, with some variability in my TDS reading. And that's that's about it, really. And then he has uh, more of a mistake on uh, the cup. Yeah. Um, no real bitterness, uh, rose petal type aroma, no off flavors typical of nature. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. Cool. This. So again, a very high extraction, Luca, and uh, um, seems like you're enjoying the flavors coming out. Not much bitter. No off flavors. Yeah, it says it's a it's a good key, a good example of a key natural processed coffee, which isn't surprising from a roaster that usually sticks to buying washed coffees. Uh, yeah, I found that a, a lot. Uh, I don't know if any any other people have found it as to still tuned in that a lot of the coffees at the moment are naturals. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the current fashion at the moment, or whether. Um, the quality of the beans <laughs> and so more people are processing it that way um but yeah it's very interesting and um, there are a, quite a few good naturals flowing around which i was also surprised about um so yes 2021 is the year of the naturals in my opinion <laughs> yeah so he's saying that it's a a good brew and extraction, pretty good, even if it was slower than expected. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to change my setting a little bit from last time. Um, I'm going to go, I think, 
two and a half notches coarser on the niche compared to the last one. All right. So, let's just turn that through. Again, preheating the paper, washing the paper more like, sorry, and then preheating the V60. Now, I have to say, once you have, do you have this set up? as a, oh no, real water. Okay, just gotta, about me a second, just gotta fill the tank. Now, I was going to say, now that you have it set up, it is a lot easier <laughs> to get your brew on straight away. And uh, that would include, if you have your tank filled up, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, when you do have this uh, set up, um, I did actually forget to mention that I did actually back flush uh, this group and clean this group head. Um, so while I'm here, um, I just used the back, group, uh, back flush group, uh, back flush head to back flush the, uh, the group head to clean up all the grounds. But then I do an extra technique of, I actually get a cloth and wipe in all the other ones to grind, uh, 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 essentially wipe away all the, all the grounds that are still stuck there, especially around the screw. I found the screw is the pit that catches all the, uh, all the points. Um, and then I do a final step in, I release the water, um, and wait until I have a shower. Um, sometimes when I wipe the dispersion screen with the towel, um, it essentially um, uh, dries it to the point where it, it's so dry that the water can't travel there at the same pace as the other places. So sometimes it's good to sort of flush it, let it all get wet again, and then you'll find your, your distribution of water is a lot more even. Thank you, John, for making this scale waterproof so I don't have to worry about moving it all the time. Um, okay, so I've just ground the coffee. Uh, it looks a little bit more coarser this time, which is good because I changed the setting. So if we can see the hand technique. Okay, it does feel a lot more rounder, the grind sizes between my fingers and palms and uh, around about a similar sort of uh, smearing of the coffee powder on the top. Okay, so dump it straight in in one motion. Forward, left and right. I've got the brush. We do a small little divot, gently, not to make compression. Okay, uh, it's just like so. Okay. Check my scale is still connected. It is not, so press the wait button. Wait. Scale not connected. Try again. One more time.
bit of quick troubleshooting, just shut down the app, shut off the scale, wait for the app to start again before I start the scale. Hopefully it should connect straight away. Uh, when you see the flashing button, it says wait. And I think I might be all right. Nope, tap again. Please connect. Oh, uh, anything coming through on the chat room, Mohammed? That's what I was trying to. Think. Yeah, so we have uh, Josiah uh, asking. Has anyone else experienced a consistently thick mouthfeel, kind of like the opposite of good clarity, when using the decent or pour overs? So far, I have been unable to get a cup with good clarity and intensity of flavors comparable to something I hand drip. Ah, oh, um, uh, are they also agitating the grounds while while the decent is working ahead? So. Hopefully, uh, if you missed the first time round, maybe you can catch up on the zoom uh, on the on the when it's uploaded, or check out the extraction right now, and you can check out my agitations. Um, I suspect that he's not agitated, or is perhaps too coarse uh, for the D one to to gain extra uh, that that high extraction yields. Um, it wouldn't surprise me that a lot of people. Doing manuals will uh, generally go a lot coarser than they uh, need, um, especially when they move on to the DE1. Um, people will generally go coarser on a hand uh, when manually doing it uh, to alleviate that bitterness, but will generally uh, pour quite quickly and aggressively uh, because they need that extra agitation as their grounds are coarse. Um, so he says that uh, he stirs after the first pour each time. Okay, okay. Then um, I would see if he would uh, look into his uh, timing. So if his extractions are shorter than four minutes. Um, if it is shorter than four minutes, then he, he should uh, go ahead and change his grind settings to finer to bring the, the brew time up a little bit. Okay, he's listening to you so you can keep going. Mm -hmm. And if there's something else, I'll let you know. Okay. Right, I'm going to um, start. Ah, so he's just answered back. He's on an EK and an Ultra. Yeah. Uh, so EKs are very, very, uh, uh, will produce very clean coffee. Um, so when I used to brew on the EK, it was, uh, I was doing about six, six and a half when doing a hand brew. Um, yeah. But yeah, try to aim for four minutes on on the decent, um, and you'll find you'll you'll get a lot more of those uh, a lot more flavors coming out. That's for sure. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna start this recipe off. Um, if anyone is interested uh, in trying this out, I'll see if I can share this uh, a bit later on this week. Uh, but it is essentially I'm still playing around with it. But if anyone is interested, just ping me or let me know and, I, and I'll share this profile with you. And you can you can kind of have a play around with it yourself. OK, so um, this is 15 grams. Hope to get around 230, 250 milliliters of water, depending on on uh, on, on the uh, accuracy of the water dispersion at the moment, because like I said, it's not 100 percent accurate. So I've just got myself in the ballpark. So uh, uh, Jason, Jason is asking what profiles are you using? Ah, so in the first half of the Zoom, I used the Scott Rayo um, um, recipe, uh, just the 15 gram one. Um, and now um, I'm going to use a recipe that I've, I've literally just made uh, on Friday evening. Um, and it's, it's exploring uh, Tetsu Katsuya's um, uh, method of uh, applying uh, ratio uh, to affect flavor so what is he saying it's a 4.6 ratio uh, method but uh, you should uh, sort of adjust things in the first 40 percent of your of your uh, recipe uh, and all this should be done in five pours including the pre-infusion okay so uh, i'll bring the camera out now and so you can see the graph and i will go through the settings and all that again if you are interested or share the profile so it does look very similar in that it has uh, peaks and pulses and pauses um, so is a high flow rate going in for the agitation 
it is a 45 second pause for the bloom. Again, high pulse. Um, these two will have different water volumes. The last three will have the same, okay? The pause is in between after the first pour or 40 seconds after that, okay? So the major difference is in with these three pulses, okay? After that, they're pretty much the same, okay? All right, so 15 grams in, 225 to 250 out, and there will be uh, agitation involved similar to Scott Rayo's recipe. So what am I waiting for before I start my agitation? Is the uh, coffee bed to be uh, it's almost covered to the point where it's like this, and then I will go vigorously, okay? How vigorous do I go? I don't want my um, sides of the coffee to go anywhere above the point where I know the water will go, okay? So the water will most likely come up to about here, okay? Uh, but I swirled the grounds to here, so what that will do is when the water for the next pour goes in, um, the, the grounds of the side that are already at the sides will come down and be reintegrated back into the brew. Okay. Um, someone is asking if we can add a James Hoffman V60 preset. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Um, he, I believe he does also three to four pours, um, but he does some uh, techniques with a spoon. Um, so he, uh, I think on the third or fourth one, he uses a spoon to agitate the grounds. And um, yeah, we could probably do that. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, give me some time and I'll, I'll see if I can put that one together. Um, I have used that particular method previously when I was doing manual brews and I did find them to be very good um, but uh, uh, the quality of the beans I was getting at the time <laughs> weren't so great and uh, I found it was like, over extracting some of my coffees a lot but uh, for sure with, uh, with high quality coffees that is a very good technique to use. Um, I like the fact that he goes into um, really looking at uh, integrating all the grounds in and does use different techniques in terms of agitation and stirring um, to really satisfy um, as, a, as even an extraction as he can. Uh, and I think that's what he's really trying to achieve with his recipe there. Um, not the simplest of recipes, uh, but for sure it, it does lead to great results. So yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, work on that some point this week, Scott. Awesome. Okay, so we are just going into the finished third pulse, um, coming into the fourth. Um, we're about three quarters of the way through now. So from now on, all the pulses are the same water volume and the same pauses in between. So now the rocking is very gentle, as you can see. All I'm trying to do is just settle the grounds so that when it does draw all the way down, the bed should be flat and I shouldn't see much coffee around the outside of the uh, V60. Okay. Two thirty. Okay, I was aiming for two twenty-five uh, all the way to two fifty, so that's great. The uh, technology and magic did its work. Uh, three minutes twenty-six, and I still have a little bit of coffee in there, uh, uh, water in there. So we're coming up to four minutes now, and at four thirty, I will take it off. Okay. So even though I went coarser. <laughs> the brew time was still round about the same. Um, theories towards this. Um, could be that I compressed the grounds a little bit more on this one. I did feel a little bit of crunch, I have to admit. 
Um, possible retention from the niche from the last dose could also be uh, maybe an extra half gram. Um, but yeah, interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take it off now because it is coming up to just gone over a minute after it's done. So it's just past four minutes and 30 seconds. I'll just put this over here. It drips off. There's my lovely bro. Okay, so get another glass. Ooh. Pouring from a video cam. Quite difficult. I love the color of this. It's like burgundy. Oh, okay. So, um, if anyone remembers from tasting the first brew I did, which was a slightly finer uh, extraction, but strangely enough, it's the same uh, amount of time. Um, perhaps the pulses and the extra weight. Ah, there you go, I've answered my own question. Because the pulses were an extra 15 seconds longer um, than the Scott Rayo recipe, um, it was actually the same amount of time to do the brew uh, with 25 milliliters less, okay? But immediately, even before it's cooled down fully, I can already tell that this is a lot more refreshing and the acidity is is actually making it um, making it refreshing. So it's not got that. Oh, it's quite rich. I'm not sure whether I want to keep drinking that because the aftertaste is still in my mouth. Now it's like, oh, I want to try this more. Mm, why? I can't taste what it is, and it's more compelling. Um, and that's what I'm looking for personally when I'm looking for a B60. Uh, it it has to be compelling to drink. I have to sort of keep coming back to it, sipping it. Uh, maybe waiting till um, it's cooled down a little bit to see if I can taste more flavors. Um, and essentially this is a flavor bomb. Um, it's, got, it's got a little bit of berries in there as well as that sort of aftertaste of liqueur, chocolate liqueur. Um, and like I said, it's, it's the acidity that's really balancing out now um, and making it much more enjoyable. So yeah, um, I definitely, I'm, think there is something there in terms of changing the first 40% of what you're doing in terms of uh, pour overs on the DE1. Um, if anyone wants to uh, interest in looking into this profile, I will post something on Daspora uh, shortly. And if you know if people are willing to try other recipes by other people, then uh, I'll, I'll look into creating more profiles that other people have created uh, and see how they fare on the decent. But um, essentially from a few early experiments from Friday evening till now, um, I would say I'm very happy with this preset. And um, as long as you've got your grind in the rough ballpark, um, I think it's quite an easy recipe to do, much like the Scott Rayo's one. Um, but uh, yeah, a little bit different um, and will give you something more to play around with. All right. Okay. So, is there any been any more questions so far? No, no more questions so far. Okay. Uh, you guys, if you, have, if you have any questions before we call it, yeah, yeah, uh, just let us know. I think um, we're coming up to the two hours now. Um, we've covered up quite a lot. Um, so, if anyone doesn't have any more questions, I think we will start to wrap it up there. Um, Mohammed, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching me make lots of brews and not tasting them. Um, maybe I'll come in on Monday and then and give you a try of what we've tasted to give you a point of reference. I did. You know, I'm a very slow learner, so today <laughs> I actually had to pay attention and learn a couple of things. So thank you so much. No, no problem at and, all. Um, yeah, on uh, next week uh, I can get to taste a couple of these at the decent uh, headquarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, As actually, someone is asking, so Luca is saying, are there any developments on the stopping the basket plugging? Has anyone tried to put a cotton rag in the filter? Oh, um, I actually, cle like, um, my suspicion is with the clogging is sometimes, because like, I, I have one machine at the, in the factory that for the last two weeks, I've essentially uh, used it just as a brew station. 
and so no coffee grounds have ever touched this dispersion screen but what i did notice was that even oops, sorry even though i i hadn't put any coffee through i did notice that the holes were were doing that characteristic as if it, it, something is blocking the way now i think my theory is 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 the the water residue as it's dried perhaps there is a slight bit of calcification in the holes and um, so I've just been wiping the cloth uh, underwater and then drying it with a paper towel uh, and actually that seems to have um, sorted out the problem so I used to think that it was the group head in, uh, in it was just grounds in the group head but you know after cleaning it so many times for like 15 minutes, uh, thinking, well, I think that's my OCD coming out, but thinking that there was the coffee grounds in there, I think I got them all out. And, and it was actually to do with the, uh, uh, the holes itself. Um, so uh, maybe try that, uh, try like uh, cleaning the holes itself. They may have some, some scaling forming from, from the water uh, drying up inside. Um, I would just suspect it happen quite quickly because especially if you leave it in there there is a pool of water still in there so when you do take it out just be mindful that there could be hot water in when you're taking this out same with the porta a tea porta filter uh but yeah um good question luca <laughs> but a cotton rag um that could work uh as but i'm thinking maybe we could use something that may not impart as much flavor as a coffee rag I i'm thinking that you know when we use siphon cloths and um, we have to cook, put them in the fridge in water to stop the bacteria and things like that. So we could look into something that is more uh, suitable in terms of material. But I, I like your thinking. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so uh, if there's nothing awesome. else, thanks, Paul. Yeah, I think we'll wrap it there. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Thanks yeah, for hosting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for taking time, and thanks everyone for uh, tuning in. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for joining in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.